Hi, happy Sunday. Welcome to Kate's Kitchen. I'm Kate. I'm glad to see you here. Doesn't look like there's anybody here yet, but I am a minute or two early, so that's okay. We'll just watch. This morning, our, our um, topic is going to be of mentors and muses. And basically what we're going to be talking about is who are your mentors and what is your muse? A muse is something that, or someone that inspires you, that makes you want to do something that you haven't done before. Lisa, hi, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Uh, we were just talking about our, our topic for the day, which is of mentors and muses. And I was explaining that a muse is someone or something that inspires you, something that captures your attention and makes you want to do something about it. And mentors, of course, are the people who help you do that. Um, I would hope that there are a lot of folks out there who would um, have mentors, people who have helped them along in their travels down the road of life. I've had been blessed to have quite a few really wonderful mentors. Hi, David. Good to see you. Um, one of my most recent mentors is someone I think you both know, and that's Daddy Kerbs, which is Blake Kirby. Blake has been a wonderful, wonderful mentor to me. He's really helped me a lot on this YouTube journey. Hello, Deborah E. I'm glad to see you here. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, Queen Maven. Hi, Laura. It's good to see you here, too. We're talking about mentors and muses. And I was telling everyone that Daddy, Daddy Kerbs, or Blake Kirby, is my most recent mentor. He's really been helping me a lot. He was one of the biggest encouragers to get me started on my walk down YouTube road and has been a huge help on showing me how to do things, encouraging me, and really helping a lot. Um, my muse, uh, there's all kinds of things, and that's something I want you guys to help with. Like I said, a muse is something that inspires you or makes you want to do something. And so far, those of you who come on Sundays and talk with me have inspired me to do several different videos and have inspired me to come here every Sunday to talk to you. So I guess you could say you guys are my muses. Uh, do you have muses or mentors? Let me know in the chat. I'd love to see who inspires you and who helps you in your travels. Looks a little slow right now. I hope some folks get here, but then like I said, I am very early. I signed on before one, which for me is early. So I'm hoping that folks will come on in. Lisa, who is your mentor and who are your muses? And Deborah, same for you and same for you, Laura. I really want to know. I think it'll help us all to share that. And that's what we're about here, isn't it? Sharing. At least I hope so. Right back at me. Some of the channels I follow are inspired. Oh, good, Laura. That, uh, that's something I hadn't thought about, but you're right. Some of the channels can be very inspiring. Which ones do? Which ones follow you or inspire you? And who do you follow? Which reminds me, last week I did sent some people to a few channels that I saw with shout outs. I wanted to tell everybody here both in the live and in the replay. All of the people who come to my channel, all of the people who chat in this chat room have wonderful channels. I'm subscribed to, as far as I know, I'm subscribed to every one of them. And I suggest that if you see someone in the chat that you're not familiar with, you don't know, that you should um, go to their channel and subscribe to them, watch their videos. Deborah says, I have several YouTube muses. And I, oh, I'm one of them. What? Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate that. And Laura says, I'm one of hers. And also Liz. Oh, yes. Liz is very, very important to me, too. Hi, Phyllis. I didn't see you sneak in here. Robbie and Gary's channel is an inspiration. Excellent. Um, I've been watching a little bit of them. I had not found them until just recently. 
but I started watching them and I do like their channel as well. Uh, they have some pretty good tips and things on gardening. So at least I hope it's the same Robbie and Gary. <laughs> you never know. There's an awful lot of channels out there. Lisa, if you're still here, who's your muse? Well, hello, Barb. It's good to see you here. Another aspect of being a muse is someone who just inspires you. For me, that's a fellow named Brian Vaughn back in Florida. Yes, David, I agree. Uh, Deborah E says, Roots and Refuge, Bobby and Gary Gardner. Bobby and Gray? Okay. Is that okay? Roots and Refuge is a wonderful, wonderful play, uh, channel to follow. They have so much knowledge and they are such good people. I've been following them for a long time and I really, really enjoy them. Barb? We're talking about muses and mentors. Who are yours? My muses are all of you guys that come to my videos, come to my chats. Um, almost every time I have a live stream, somebody says something that triggers either an idea for another live stream or triggers a video. And speaking of videos, tomorrow night, I'm going to have a premiere of another video. So watch for the notice on those too. I'll be uploading that today. Uh-oh, Deborah disappeared. Huh? <laughs> We're kind of quiet tonight. There we go. I have several prepping channels I watch to help me learn and keep moving. You know, Deborah, I'm glad to see you say that. A lot of people say prepping like it's a bad word. And to me, prepping means preparing for whatever the future holds, whether it's good or bad, you could always use a little preparation. Let's see, David said, Kate was an inspiration for me actually writing a book back in 2017. It's called Growing Up David, and I'm serializing it in a blog right now. Yes, that was a really amazing trip that he took, a road that he took. Watching him go back and think about the memories of when he was a child and pull those things together into stories was just fascinating to me. And I got to learn so much about David that I would not have learned any other way. Let's see. Laura says, anyone who is making do with little, not spending money when you can recycle, reuse, etc. I agree, Laura. That's, that's very important. There are a lot of people that live around me that think I'm kind of crazy because I do so much recycling and reusing and gardening and canning and dehydrating and all those things that those of us in this area, in this group, take for granted or at least want to learn. I think it's important to do all of that. Phyllis, I have to go, but I'll watch the replay. I love you. Thank you for coming, Phyllis. I hope you do get to watch it. Grampy Campy's here. Hi, Grampy. It's good to see you. We're talking about muses and mentors and who is your muse and who is your mentor. Uh, we've got a lot of different stories. Um, a lot of people say that the channels they follow here on YouTube are their muses and that those inspire them to do something else. And I was sharing that Daddy Curbs of Daddy Curbs Farm is one of my most recent mentors because he is the one who encouraged me and showed me how and guided me through setting up my YouTube channel and doing videos. And he's, he's with me for a lot of this time. Uh, Deborah says, I look for channels that are real and bring value to my life. I don't like fluff and bait click. I don't either, Deborah. I agree with you. Barb says, any video I watch, but I love, oh, she loves me, Roots and Refuge, and Chef. I can't remember his name. I'm really inspiring and empowering, so make me believe I can. Oh, thank you so much, Barb. I really appreciate that because that's one of the things I do. I try and inspire people and empower them to do the things they don't think they can. So much in life looks scary, but when you actually sit down and start doing it, it's not hard and it's not scary at all. David says, I waste literally nothing. That is true. I hate to throw things away. I really do. Lisa, sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. was on the phone. Oh, that's all right. Blake is the one that makes me want to do videos, but I have not been able to make one yet. 
Blake is an amazingly inspiring person. He really is. And he's so humble and so kind and so real. It's amazing. Uh, David said, Deborah E., I really dislike clickbait. Yeah, I do too. Grampy Campy, you do too? Good. Oh, hike with me. Hi. I'm so glad to hear from you. I have not seen you online in a while. Hike with me says, I get a lot of tips from my mom. She lived during the depression. She's 95 and lives with me. You know, hike with me, that's that's pretty cool. My mom just turned 90 last April. She and my dad still live alone in their home, but she's 90 and she gives me lots of tips all the time. It's wonderful to have your parents still with you. It's amazing. It really is. Thrifty VG, I'm glad you joined us. Hi. Oh, I was telling everyone the other day, pointing out various channels that came in, and I want everyone to know that the folks that come on this chat, almost every one of them I have subscribed to. I can't think of any that have come in yet that I haven't. And I really encourage you, if there's someone here that you don't know, go to their channel when the chat is over, check them out. There are some wonderful content creators out there that I really, really enjoy seeing. Let's see. Grampy says, I live across the road from my parents. Oh, that is so neat. My parents are about 25 minutes away, but still they're close enough to drive quickly. Yeah, Dave says that's really a cool and a blessing. Yeah, having my parents close and alive is really wonderful. Um, I feel so blessed because I know at their ages of 90 and my age of 70, that's not going to be... So much longer. Uh, Deborah E., I just spent the last few days with mom and stepdad. Had a blast talking about when we were kids growing up in Oklahoma. You grew up in Oklahoma. That's pretty close to Texas. <laughs> right? Let's see. Hike with me says, mom just came to live with me last month. That's why we've been on YouTube. Ah, it's a big change having somebody move in that you're not used to, or at least you're not used to having them move with you right now. Um, one day that might happen with me, although I'm not, I'm not real sure. My mom says that our birds make too much noise and she couldn't live with it. So who knows? But if it comes to it, I'm going to move her in if I can. <laughs> Let's see. Grampy Campy's parents are almost 80. Well, I'm almost 70. I'll be 70 in about three weeks. So I know how that goes. I try to focus on real life matters type things on my show. Yes. Uh, you know, Grampy, a lot of people that I follow, or actually most of the people that I follow that are in the homesteading, quote unquote, um, genre, do. They try and put things out there that are useful, that are helpful, that can prepare us for lean times. It's amazing how much information is out there, how many skills are out there that we don't use anymore. Um, that's one of the reasons I really love these channels. Lisa Johnson, I learned so much from my mom and my grandmother, all the gardening and food preservation, sewing, etc., and also how to live without indoor plumbing or electricity. Yeah, Lisa, I learned a lot from my grandparents and my mom, too. Um, I only had one grandmother living close to us, but she was, she was a piker. She really had lived through a lot in her life. We never had to live without electricity for any length of time, but it, it's tough. It's tough to do. Deborah E., my mom is the one with the birds. She keeps telling me they'll be mine when she's gone. Uh, Deborah, that may not be a joke. <laughs> Our birds are all under 25, and these birds live sometimes up to 100 or more years old. So you may end up with those birds. <laughs> We don't know who's going to end up with ours. Uh, David's daughter had thought she might take them, but I don't think that's going to happen now. I think she's gone on to other things, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with ours. Uh, Grampy says, I try to do the same things as the big channels with a lot less hype. Me too. Me too. Hi, Iron Fire Horse. It's good to see you. I'm glad you came in. Mama's in the garden. Yay, you made it. Hi. Thank you for stopping by. Thrifty BG, my parents are 84 this year, and both of them live in different states. One lives in Long Island. The other lives in South Carolina. They were both nine years old when World War II ended. 
My goodness, that's amazing. My mom can, uh, dad can still remember World War II. So better late than not at all. You're absolutely right, Iron Fire Horse. I always, always encourage people, even if they get here for the last two minutes, I love seeing faces and names of the folks that come in. And I really encourage people, even if they get here late, please come. Please say hi. You, you guys are so important to me. I just can't tell you how important you are and how much you, in, in, I can't even talk, how much you inspire and enthuse me. I'm really glad. Oh, good. Some of you know each other. That's excellent. Iron Fire Horse is saying hi to Mamas in the Garden. Oh, I don't remember if I told you guys last Sunday or not, but I did make my goal of 1,500 subscribers before my birthday. Um, I was talking to Blake yesterday after the show. I have a long way to go on um, watching hours before I can even qualify to be monetized. And I still haven't decided whether monetization is for me or not. I uh, Thank you, Grampy. I appreciate it. 1,500 was a big step for me. I, that was the goal I set when I started making my videos. And the first 100 was scary. After that, it has just been a wonderful, wonderful trip. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if I'm going to monetize or not. I keep thinking about it. People say... YouTube's going to make money on me. I ought to go ahead and make some money on them too. Um, but I don't know. All the ads and the stuff, I, I didn't get into this to make money. I got into it to share. And I may still continue to do that. I just haven't decided. Mama's in the garden. Oh, Mama's in the garden says hi to Iron Fire Horse. Barb Snyder. Thank you, Barb, for saying yay for me. Iron Fire Horse says that's awesome, Kate. Way to go. Congrats. Thank you very much. Again, Guys, like I said, I set that goal way back on August the 10th last year when I wanted to have my 1500 by my birthday, which is August the 31st. So I'm a little early, but not a lot. Um, I haven't set the next video, the next goal yet as far as subscribers. I think my goal for YouTube is going to be getting back to one video a week. That's what I started with, but then I've had some health issues, and my mom has had some health issues. My best friend has had some health issues, and we had some friend, had a friend die, and just life has stood in the way. It's It's been kind of a long year, but I'm hoping that I can get back to one video a week, and then from there, maybe step up to two or three. I'm also thinking about the possibility of... Um, doing more than one live stream a week because that really seems to help. Let's see, Lisa says, I always leave the ads running for all the channels I watch just to support them. I don't have any real money to send. You know, Lisa, I don't know anything about the ads yet, but I'm learning it. And I know that anybody that watches anything having to do with the channel supports them. And believe me, support is not just money. It's coming and watching the the videos it's coming to the to the live chats it's our kind comments so many other things that show support iron fire horse you're right life does that it's like somebody was out there trying to slow me down on this youtube thing so <laughs> i'm taking my time i'm doing what i can and i'm not stressing over it and you guys have all been so encouraging and kind about that so i'm just gonna keep going the way i do Barb says, it always makes my day to hear good news. There's a lot of things not so good out there you've been through. Yes, I have. The last few years, since 2017, things have been really hard. I've lost two sisters in, that, in 2017. So that was the start of a real hard time. Christy Betts. Hi, I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. We're talking today about muses and mentors. I'm asking people to say, who are their muses? Those are the ones that inspire you to do things. And mentors are the ones that guide you along the way. So let us know who your muses and mentors are. Hike With Me says, that's awesome. I'm struggling to get 700. I'm not monetizing, but want to go live in remote places. So I need a thousand on my channel just for fun. Well, Hike With Me, you got me. I was on your channel 
from the first time I saw you. Uh, Campy Grampy says you're, uh, oh, he says David is right. Good. Good luck on that hike with me. I really hope you make it. I'm not a traveler. I don't do well going away. I do much better when I can sleep in my own bed every night. Uh, traveling for me is a couple hours up the road or back. That's about the best I can handle. But I know a lot of people do. And I know Dave used to travel. He was in the military and he traveled a lot. So um, hopefully he's over that now. <laughs> Let's see. Mama's in the garden says, I think that's very wise, Kate. I think if YouTube or anything else becomes a chore rather than a joy, it's time to rethink it. You know, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. I don't want it to become a chore. I love the joy I get from it, and I really don't want anybody else. I don't want it to be anything but a joy. Jeff, I'm sorry the Rams didn't win. This is kind of a cooking channel guy. I don't know if you know that or not. Let's see. Bear Creek. Okay. Um. <laughs> are you laughing at me, Iron Fire Horse, or are you laughing at somebody else? Randy Leonard, I am so glad you made it. Welcome. We're talking about muses and mentors today, and I'm really glad that you came. Let us know who your muses are. Those are the people who inspire you to do things, and your mentors, they're the ones who guide you along the way and help you. Deborah E. says, I'm a homebody. I love being at home and taking care of my hubby. Me too, Deborah. I really do. I much prefer to be at home than going out somewhere. I truly do, so... I agree with you entirely. And my kids are grown. My youngest child is 38, so I don't have any little ones running around. But I do like being at home taking care of my hubby. It's my joy to be able to do things to take care of him. I truly, really enjoy it. Iron Firehorse, you were laughing with, it's not a sports channel. <laughs> well, I saw him talk about the Rams didn't win something in the NFL and truly is not a sports channel. I don't know anything about most of the sports out there. So, oh, Dave, you're so sweet. But he is rude. I love being at B Lady Apiary. I'm glad to see you came in. Thank you for joining us. This is another person who has been a mentor to me. I mean, a muse to me. I met her just a little over a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. And she has inspired me more than I can, can say. So this is another one. And you never know where your muse is going to show up. It really is kind of surprising. Muse Grandma DC's insanity and mentor was my mother. Oh, very good. Very good. Deborah E says her youngest child is 35. Yeah, mine's 38. She turned 38 last December. Uh, Mama's in the Garden says her muses are her children. They always remind me I'm doing better than I think I am. Boy, I wish I could say that. My children sometimes make me feel like I'm not doing anything at all because I just refuse to bump in or butt into their lives. I told them when they were very young that when they were on their own, I would be here for them. I would give them advice if they asked for it, but I was not going to butt in and tell them what to do. They were adults. I was going to do my best to raise them and give them value, and then they were... They were going to live their lives, and I'd be there to help, but I was not going to tell them how to live. So, thank you, B-Lady. I appreciate you selling, you sharing out this. I have not done that for myself. I need to do it, but the minute it gets started, I'm so busy talking, I forget to share it out. So, I really appreciate that. Let's see. My kids say that I was a good mom, but... Now they kind of, every once in a while, I get a little dig that says, Mom, you could call more often. And I always say, yeah, well, the phone goes both ways, guys. And both of my children, I have two daughters. They're both extremely busy professional women. Um, my oldest daughter has a very, very um, busy life. She not only works for someone else, but she also has a travel business of her own. And my youngest daughter has a very busy life as an accountant, and she also has two sons. My oldest grandson is in high school, which just throws me. It really does. 
Mama's in the garden says, my mom says, helps helps only help if you want it. If you don't want it, it's interference. That's exactly right. The bee lady says all of our three children have a different perspective on us. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be. You raise them what you think is the same and give them the same values, but they get something different often. Let's see, hike with me. Oh, it's saying hi and welcome. The bee lady, the oldest two think we're feeble and can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I understand that one. I'm hitting, like I said, I'm hitting 70 at the end of this of this month and um, sometimes they act like I can't remember how to do anything oh well let's see yes Dave says my youngest daughter rescues and fosters dogs and that is really something wonderful let's see Lisa says her daughter and son-in-law want them to live with them, want her to live with them but she likes being alone you know Lisa many years ago when my grandsons were preschool um, I was single because my my children's dad had passed and my daughter and her son asked me her husband asked me to come live with them but at the time I was going through a bout with cancer and I just couldn't face the idea of going up into the north and living in snow when I'd never lived with it in my life and my um medical expenses were so high that I knew they just couldn't handle that too. So I had to turn them down, but I felt bad about it. I really did. I would, would have enjoyed in many ways being up there with them and with my grandsons. Let's see. B-Lady says, the youngest who was the last out of the nest wants to come back. He drove me nuts and we, we must tell him no to those. Oh, that's hard to do, B-Lady. That's really hard to do. Um... Dave says his son in Oregon would like to come here. Yeah. All myself and all three of my siblings ended up at one time or another moving back in with my parents. I stayed with them for about 18 months and I had to leave. Not because I didn't love them, not because I didn't love living with them, but I felt like they deserved time on their own. They deserved time alone with each other, not with kids around. So I stayed until I could get on my feet. I got on my feet and I got out. So, yep. Let's see. Bee Lady says, we love our time alone, even though it's a lot of work and we love our time alone finally. Yep. That's, that's the way I felt like my parents would feel too. I was the last one to move back in. I'm the firstborn. I was the last one to move back in. And I really felt like my parents needed some time by themselves. They didn't need kids living with them all the time. So... I, I moved out as quickly as I could. Uh, I was thankful that they were there for me, but I did move out as quickly as I could because they needed their time too. Let's see. Grampy says they feel, he and his wife feel that way too. I think everybody does. I really do. I think when you marry young, you expect to have children and raise them, but you also live with the idea that when they're raised and gone, it's your time. So, yeah, I agree. Um, Grampy Campy, uh, we got a business classification in our state. You, oh, okay. Bee Lady Apiary is, is a business as well as just loving her working with bees. So Lisa says, I take a couple of the grandkids at least once a week just to give them a break, but it's a struggle to get my own work done since I work at least 80 hours a week. My word, Lisa, that's a lot of work time. 80 hours a week? What do you do, darling? Are you a tax accountant? Isn't that what you said last week? Boy, that's amazing. 80 hours a week. I work 80 hours a week, but it's all here. <laughs> I don't go out anywhere. I do it all here at the house. Let's see. B-Lady says we've been a legal business for over two years now making platforms that way. Ah, okay. Even more during taxes. Yes, you are a tax accountant. You know, my youngest daughter that I was telling you about is... is um, an accountant as well. She doesn't do taxes. She does um, accounting for a large firm up in the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul area. I'm not sure exactly which one, but she's the head of a whole team that does that. So, and it amazes me that my 38 year old daughter is in charge of a whole group of people that do what they do. That's got to be a lot of stress and a lot of hard work. 
I had my own business when they were growing up, but I never really wanted to be a supervisor. I had to when we had our own business and I did it, but I was glad when that, when I didn't have to do it anymore. <laughs> so let's see, bee lady, mama's in the garden, right? Only one queen bee. Oh. <laughs> yep. Only one queen bee in every hive and this hive and this kitchen, I'm the queen bee. And I like it. I really do. But then I love being in the kitchen. I wish I had been able to pass that along to my daughters. Neither of my daughters really enjoys being in the kitchen. And neither of them really enjoys cooking. Or I don't think either of them do any canning or preserving or anything like that. That just wasn't something they were not into. So, oh well. You can only pass on what they're willing to receive. Be lady. Let's see. Ah, oh, Bee Lady says she's the Queen Bee there as well. I can believe that. Let's see, Mama in the Garden says my father-in-law is an accountant. He didn't come to our wedding because it was his tax season. I know a lot of people that don't do things during tax season because they're tax accountants. That is an incredibly stressful time. I worked for a while at the University of Texas in Austin in the accounting department, and we had a lot of tax accountants there. That's where they went to learn how. And tax season, everybody's temper was short and everybody worked hard and was under a lot, a lot of stress and pressure. So, and these were kids learning how and the adults teaching them how. So I can't imagine what it'd be like to make your living doing that. Grampy Campy says, do you sell to the, oh, she's talking to the lady. Lisa Johnson, the kids complain that my kitchen is not a place to eat. <laughs> Canning, soap making, dehydrating, etc., but no room to eat. We don't eat in my kitchen either. We always eat in on uh, TV trays in front of the television because there's no room in my kitchen to eat either. Of course, my kitchen is not an eating kitchen. Uh, I have an island right in the middle of it, and I have cabinets and stove and refrigerator and all that other stuff on either side. So ours is not an eating kitchen either. B Lady says, we did the math. I have spent over half of my life raising kids, getting them through college, etc. I now want the special time with my husband to enjoy. I told my kids when they were little that if they wanted to go to college, that they would have to do it on their own because I was not going to support kids going to college. Like most kids, they would go to college, they'd spend their time partying and not studying, and all that money would be wasted. And I was blessed with two smart daughters who put themselves through college and did a beautiful job. It took a little longer than four years, but they both did it and they did a beautiful job with it. And they both are graduates now. Christy said, my mother criticized everything my sister and I cooked. I try to brag on my kids cooking. You know, when the girls were teenagers, they started trying to cook a little bit. And one Thanksgiving, I didn't have to lift a finger for Thanksgiving dinner. They did everything and it was wonderful. But I don't think they really enjoyed it because they don't do a lot of it anymore. My oldest daughter is too busy. Uh, she doesn't cook much at all. Uh, her boyfriend likes to cook, so she lets him do the cooking. <laughs> Mama's in the garden says, to be fair, we got married in Scotland where we live, and my father-in-law lives in Michigan. It's kind of hard to go home with that distance, isn't it? Mama's in the garden. Bee Lady says, Christy, you're a nice mother. I've learned to keep my mouth shut else I may not see my grandchildren. Do you know, like I said, my oldest grandson is in high school. I've seen him three times in his life, but it's because he lives way up north in Minnesota and I live in Texas and I don't travel. And so I've seen him three times and I love him, but I don't go there. Let's see. Hike with me. Oh, no. Says hike with me makes soaps. Apparently, so does Lisa. Grampy Campy says, "Mama's in the garden." I live in Michigan too. Aha! You guys maybe ought to talk if you live anywhere near each other. The bee lady says, "My daughter always criticized what I wear. I dressed up for years, working where I wear what I want now." I always told my kids, "If you don't like what I'm wearing, don't look at me." And I told them to tell their friends the same thing. What you wear is comfortable and it's a personal choice. It has nothing to do or should have nothing to do with anybody else. I just, I don't believe that people should be able to tell you how to look. 
uh, Lisa Johnson, my daughter is an awesome cook and has introduced her husband to so many new things. I had her eating things from many different cultures from a toddler. That's awesome, Lisa. I started learning about, I <laughs> can't even talk today. I started learning about other cultures when I worked at the University of Texas in Austin. I had a lot of friends and a lot of the labs that I worked in from other countries. And I learned quite a bit, especially from a lot of the Oriental countries. And wonderful people, superfoods. I really enjoyed getting to know all of that. Let's see. B Lady says, I make soaps and shapes like cows and chickens and colors that have over three, she has over 300 molds, my word. I don't make soap through it. I used to make cards and I had at least that many rubber stamps. I'm slowly closing those out now though. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get most of that either sold or donated very soon. Let's see, B Lady says, isn't where your daughter lives, is that where the last gathering was? I'm sorry. Um, I don't know where the last gathering was, be lady. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any idea. Um, I don't think that Daddy Curbs has been anywhere near. My daughter lives in the St. Paul area of Minnesota, so that's all I can tell you. Iron Firehorse, I'm from Scotland, but I have lived in Canada since the 70s. Oh, how cool. Do you still, do you still sound like you're from Scotland? Um, my youngest sister's in-law, father-in-law, was from Scotland, and I used to tease him all the time about wanting to hear him talk because I loved his accent. Uh, in, oh, Doug and Stacy's. No, that was in Missouri, I think. Let's see. Lisa Johnson says she's in the same boat with moles and rubber stamps. Storage is an issue. Yes, mine was too. I had a friend that gave me a, um, a set of shelves that go on the wall that only about, oh, I guess maybe two and a half or three inches deep. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six shelves. And I could put over a hundred rubber stamps on that. And they were out where I could see them. And it was wonderful. I loved it. I've never had soap molds. I've never tried to make soaps. That's another one of those things that I haven't tried to do yet, but may in the future. So, B Lady has one that's seven, 11 inches tall, a bright 11 inches of soap. Do you do that in soap, B Lady? Um, Iron Fire Horse says, No, I sound like a Canadian with a few quirks. <laughs> You know, my youngest daughter has lived up in the St. Paul area for so many years now. She sounds like a Midwesterner with a Texas straw. <laughs> so I understand what you're talking about. Uh, let's see. I love the Scottish accent too, B lady. I think they just sound so interesting. Firehorse, I last lived in Beardston, but I was born in Glasgow. Oh, that's so cool. Bee Lady uses wax molds for soap. Oh, your 11-inch soap was something for funny shower gifts. I was going to say, I, I would think that something that long and strangely shaped would be difficult to use. Hmm. Interesting idea. Bee Lady says, please share the stream out. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, Bee Lady. I appreciate it. That I, It would be nice to have more folk come in. With more friends to make. Um, thanks, Kate. It's been great to see everyone. Got to run. Hike with me. Thank you for stopping in. And please do come back again. Please. We enjoy you so much. Jeff said, I stole the video someone else had already. Oh, it's all of them videos in the exact same order. Jeff, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sorry. They look like porcelain. Ah, so they're, they're more to look at than to use. Homestead Remembrance. Hi, I'm so glad you came in. Welcome. Iron Fire Horse, I have an aunt in Erskine. Hmm. Yes, I agree. Oh, pardon me. Bee Lady, I agree. It was lovely to see, my, to see Hype with me, and I hope he comes back. 
Uh, Mama's in the garden. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. Homestead Remembrance, I wanted to let you know we're talking about muses and mentors. Muses are the people who inspire you to do things, and mentors are the people who help you, to help you along the, the road to doing these new things. For instance, one of my mentors and muses, both, is Daddy Curbs at the Daddy Curbs Farm. He inspires me to do things all the time, and he also is my mentor, and he helps me do these things. He inspired me to make videos. Then he inspired me to do the live streams, and I wouldn't have been able to do it all, either one of them, without his help. So Daddy Curbs is both for me. Oh, good idea, Dave. He says, would everybody post in general where we live? There you go. I did. Let's see. B-Lady says her muse is the lottery. Her mentor is anyone who has winning numbers. <laughs> That's great. That is so funny. Barb is from Ohio. Lisa is from Northwest Ohio. Green Raven is Maryland. Christy is Alabama. Grampy is from Northeastern Michigan. The Bee Lady is from West New York. Deborah is from Southern Oregon. Well, we're all over the U.S. That's amazing. Homestead Remembrance is from Missouri. Wow, that's amazing. And then at least one of us is, was born in another country and has been here for a while. Vicki Medina, hi. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about muses and mentors today. Who is your muse and who is the mentor that has helped you do what you were inspired to do? I'm glad you came by, by the way. I really enjoy meeting all the new people. Oregon is a lovely area, I'm told. I've not been there, but I've seen lots of pictures, and I know a couple of people who have lived there. So thank you for coming in, and I hope you meet some folks, make some friends, and enjoy your time here. Another muse for me aside from Daddy Curbs, one of my lifelong muses is my mom. My mom has been a huge, huge influence in my life. She's been very active. She was a great mom. My parents were great parents, period. But my mom and I have been extremely close. Bandana Grandma! Oh, I'm so glad you dropped in. Thank you so much. And don't worry about being late. I'm thrilled that you made it. We're talking about muses and mentors today. Um, I was sharing that one of my lifelong muses and mentors has been my mom. She has inspired me to do so many things through my life, and she has guided me along the, li along the way so much. And it's wonderful to have someone like her still in my life. She's 90, and she's still alive and doing fairly well. She and my dad still live in their home and do things on their own, and it's wonderful to be around them. Bandana Grandma, are you going to have your show tomorrow? I hope so. I'm looking forward to moderating for you if you are. Iron Fire Horse, I imagine you would love to go back to Scotland. I am told, and from my daughter, from my sister's father in law, that it is a beautiful, beautiful land, and I would love to see it, at least in pictures. I don't do well traveling, but I'd love to see pictures of it, and I love to talk to the people that have lived there. So, I really, I, I can imagine that you would want to be there. Oh my goodness, we have so many wonderful folks here today. This has been lovely. Um, anybody else have another mentor? Let's see, I hope to do my show tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll let you know if I can't. Family issues might have to take. I understand that, absolutely. I understand that very much. Uh, family always takes precedence, and that's why I've not done very many videos for the last few weeks. Um, as Dave said, my mom's been having some neurological problems, and She's been in the hospital quite a lot over the last month. She's been in there um, 
a little over a week and a half. So she has better than she doesn't have better times and it's back and forth. So I'm, I'm hoping that this last trip, they figured out what it is. Thank you, Barb. I appreciate you praying for her. I really do. She's, she's been a wonderful influence in my life, all of my life. And, uh, Although I know that the day is coming when she won't be in my life anymore, I I hope that's a long time. Let's see. Oh my goodness, everything started going quick. Deborah E., your mom had hip had hip surgery on Wednesday. Oh, I pray for her. I know how that goes. Homestead Remembrance, you'll pray. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, Ben Danagrama, having a good relationship with my mom is one of mom of one of life's blessings. And she has been, we have been close all of my life. My mom grew up during the depression and she said that she never really did i see links come in hello links acre it's wonderful wonderful to see you today i didn't see you come in i'm sorry divine farm tv hi welcome glad to see you here um my tons of shortbread at christmas and eat until you can't eat anymore oh my goodness three pounds at one sitting iron fire hours that's amazing you need to learn to make shortbread. I'm told it's not that hard, although I haven't tried it. Oh my, let's see, Divine Farm TV, I'm welcome. Uh, for those who've just come in, what we're, our topic for today is of mentors and muses. And we're sharing who our muses in life were, those people or things that inspired you to do things and mentors are the people that helped you along that journey. So let us hear what your, who your mentors and who your muses were. Oh my goodness, Christy, I'm so sorry. Alzheimer's is really bad. My biological dad had Alzheimer's and it was getting pretty bad when he passed away. He died of COPD and heart failure, but he had gotten to the point where he was having trouble holding on to things too. So I will definitely pray for you. That's a very hard thing to go through. The lady links hikers. Okay. Homestead remembered news and mentors in homesteading category or in any category in life. Homestead remembered anyone who inspired you, anyone who helps you along. Uh, so Muse would be Blue Creek Dairy Farms in Washington here on YouTube. They're really a big inspiration. I'll have to check them out. I don't think I've heard of them before. Blue Creek Dairy Farm. Let me write that one down. By the way, folks, like I told you, or like I said early in this show, everyone, if you see someone on here that you don't know, you have not checked out their channel please when the live stream is over go check out their channels see what they're doing we have some really wonderful people that come to these chats and all of them could use more support we all who are content creators can use support so please check us out if you see somebody that you're really interested in subscribe let's see bandana grandma says my mom didn't cook from scratch a lot, but I loved her beef stew and she sewed a lot of our clothes, mended our clothes, made slip covers, and knew how to stretch a penny. Mandana Grandma, my dad used to say that my mother could stretch a penny until it screamed, so I understand. Yes, Iron Fire Horse Alzheimer's is a devastating condition, especially when you live with someone who's involved. Let's see. Farming in our backyard inside Kate's Kitchen. Hi, it's good to see you. We haven't seen you around. We've been busy around the farm lately. Thank you for coming in, farming in the backyard. I'm really glad you made it. And the McCoy's Oak Hill, too. Good to see you both. 
Um, I haven't been doing a lot of videos. Life has gotten in the way of videos, but I'm doing this live chat every Sunday. And I hope to get back on track with the videos as well. I have one coming out tomorrow, so that, that will help. So um, what we're talking about now is we're talking about mentors and muses in your life. And we want to hear who your muses were, who inspired you, and who your mentors were, those that helped you along the road. Link said, the Blue Creek Dairy Farm is such a cute couple, but they really inspired me. They bought a farm several years ago, and only two or three years ago have they actually started on it seriously. I will definitely check that out. That's, that's really neat. I like that idea. Link says it's been a long haul, long term dream for them, and they're making it a real reality. That is cool. Thank you very much, Farming Our Backyard. Um, I'm going to upload it tomorrow. I'm going to try and do a premiere tomorrow evening. I don't think I'll do it Tuesday because that's when Roots and Refuge is up. So I'm going to try and do it tomorrow. Mamas and Garden says I'm thinking of giving up my allotment and doing my gardening in raised beds in the back garden. You know, Mamas in the Garden, that's not a bad idea. You keep it close where you can get out there just a few minutes here and a few minutes there during the day instead of actually having to go to an allotment. Raised beds are also easier because you don't have to deal so much with um, weeds and those kinds of things. So I encourage you to do that if you can. McCoy says, I'm in central Minnesota, but I'm working in the sun in front of my Morton Steel building on my round baler. Ooh, that's going to be hot with the heat pouring off that steel building. Um, anyone who takes on dairy farming has my vote. Yeah, dairy farming is it's difficult. Christy said, when I was a kid, my mom used that blue starch and everything got iron. <laughs> do you know what's really funny, Christy, is when I was a kid, I used to do the ironing for mom, and I still to this day enjoy ironing. I love to iron. It's something that I find very relaxing. My dad was a police officer, and I used to do his uniform shirts, and they had all those pleats down the back. He had a central pleat right down the back, and over there were two more pleats, and then over one more, there were two more. So I did all six of those pleats and got them straight every time. He used to love it when I'd do his ironing for him. Let's see. The lady said her mom used to use the, um, the crinolines. Oh, I remember those too, yes. Oh, McCoy said you got it all greased up and ready for next winter. Good for you. And Dana says, I'm so old. I remember the elderly ladies all had blue hair. You mean they don't still all have blue hair? I thought they still did, Bandana. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't because I would be considered an elderly lady and mine isn't blue. But I'm lucky to have hair at all. After going through all the chemo I did 10 years ago, I don't have a whole lot up there. Let's see. Lisa Johnson has several icons, not one used on clothes, all for quilting. Oh, cool. Marcel Harding here on YouTube has a painting channel. He's gotten me thinking. Marcel Harding. I'll write that one down and check that out, too. I used to watch a painter. All of a sudden, his name has disappeared out of my mind. But the thing I really loved about him was he would make happy little trees in the corner of all of his pictures. And I used to really enjoy watching him. And I would get out my paper and pencils. And when he would paint, I would try and sketch what he was painting. So I, I really loved him. And I missed that he passed away. He, let's see. Bandana says, now they have funny spiked blue hair. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> Let's see. Lisa Johnson. Didn't know you used them. Okay. My uh, Mama's in the Garden says her nanny ironed everything. I even ironed socks and towels. Uh, Lisa, I was so bad. I even used to iron the cotton underwear. I ironed everything. I really... Bob Ross. Thank you, Farming Our Backyard. That was his name. I loved Bob Ross. I loved listening to him. I thought his afro was the coolest thing in the world. And his painting was absolutely phenomenal. I really miss him. Although the other day, I saw Bob Ross on our local um, public television channel. They were playing some of those again, and I really enjoyed it. 
Let's see. Farming in our backyard said when I was growing up, I would watch it. I did too. I really did. I, at one point I wanted to be a painter and then another point I wanted to be an actress and oh, I used to want to be just about everything that came along. <laughs> I, I never did finally settle down to anything. I just fell into working with computers, and that's where I stayed until I retired. Let's see. Most younger folks these days don't. It's a, Oh, ironing. It's a habit of us olders. That is very true. Standing. Um, bandana, Grandma, did your mom have the little nozzle that fit on the end of the Coke bottle and you put water in the Coke bottle, put the nozzle on and shake it before you iron because we didn't have steam irons. I have done more ironing than I can care to think about using that. Um, McCoy's Oak Hill Farm doesn't iron. Barb Snyder, you can find Bob Ross videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a few on YouTube as well. <laughs> Dave says Bob Ross's voice could put a rock to sleep. <laughs> I guess I must have been a rock. He put me to sleep more than once. <laughs> uh, Iron Firehouse, you were the one who did the ironing growing up. Yeah, me too. My three sisters never could. Me, lady, you had the sprinkle tops too. Yeah, I remember. Oh, that really brings things back. We would, we would dip the clothes in a liquid starch bring them out and put them in the refrigerator until we were ready to do the ironing. And then we take them out one at a time, shake them out on the board and sprinkle them with that sprinkle top and then iron them. Everything could stand up all on their own. It was amazing. I have a spray bottle. Yes, I have a straight steam iron and I do have a spray bottle as well because those steam irons never quite get everything right. Deborah says, I have one of those sprinklers for ironing clothes in my laundry room right now. Oh, that's so cool. That brings back so many memories. Um, B lady, the reason we put them in the fridge is because we lived in a hot area that was also humid. And if you left them in like a tub or on the counter or something, they would sour or grow mildew. It was really bad. I lived in Corpus Christi, Texas when I was growing up and the humidity was really high and the heat was really high and you had to do that. Iron fire horse. I do use spray starch now. I don't dip my clothes anymore. Let's see, bandana grandma, my single parent mother-in-law worked and paid her boys 10 cents a shirt to iron their own shirts. I never really tried to break my, tried to break my husband of that habit. I don't pay him. <laughs> Good for you. I can't tell you how many guys I have taught to iron shirts, but I use what people tell me is the wrong end of the, of the ironing board when I do it. I use the long flat end, not the pointed end when I do shirts because it gives me a lot better flat area to slide the shoulders and things over. So now you have another tip on how to iron shirts. Let's see. Farm in a backyard, that's interesting to learn about ironing. We never ironed anything but our FFA shirts. Ah, I didn't know FFA had special shirts. Let's see. Homestead remembering so many muses. Parents, grandparents, pastors, pastors' wives, brothers and friends. Many were mentors in different ways at different times. I agree, Homestead Remembrance. It's, it's, it's amazing the people in your life who are mentors or muses, both. You do that too, Iron Fire? Oh, it's so nice to see somebody else who knows how to iron the right way. <laughs> I say that because I've been teased for so long about doing it with the wrong end of the ironing board. But it makes sense to me. You have a much better flat area to do this with. Bandana Grandma says, my muse for homesteading in a small space was Jules Devereaux, I think, of Urban, Gar Urban Homesteading, who grew up and sold a ton of food in a very small city yard. Oh, how cool. Laura, regarding muses, I just found 30 saved episodes of a program I watched as a child. A local naturalist entomologist hosted a program about nature, animals, insects, plants. She loved that show. That's so cool. Farming our backyard, white button-down shirts under a blue jacket. Not real fancy. Yep, I've done that many times. Deborah says she misses the weather in Texas. She gets tired of the rain in Oregon during the winter. Yeah, but you get tired of the dry during the summer in Texas, too. Uh, Bee Lady, how do you get shoulders to lie flat? Actually, it's really pretty easy with the, the flat end of the board. You stretch it over 
and do the, the shoulder and the top. Then you turn it over and put the body of the shirt down on the board and stretch it over and you can go from the shoulder seam down the back and it straightens out and it makes it live real flat. So that's all I can tell you. Link Saker says, my muse has been Mark Shepard. I really want to have a big perennial crop and livestock farm. Oh, cool. I don't know Mark Shepard. What's his channel, Link Sakers? Um, Life with the table full. Oh, I'm so glad you joined us today. Welcome, welcome. We're talking about muses and mentors. We're asking who is you, who was the muse in your life who inspired you to do things and who were the mentors that helped you along the way? Joel Salatin was the first muse for food, bought all his books that were available at the time. He's a good one to be a muse on, at least on homesteading and raising animals and food. Homestead Remembrance, I love to iron outside. It makes it even more enjoyable. I used to iron standing in my living room watching old westerns. So let's see. Sex sounds too hot for this born and raised Ohio girl. Well, I guess it's just what you're used to. You know, I, I'm used to Texas. I never really lived for any length of time anywhere else. I lived 18 months one place, 18 months another, but most of the time I've been right here in Texas. So Wildcat Hollow Farms, it's good to see you here as well. Thank you for joining us. Life with the Table Full Terry is your muse. That's really cool. Let's see. I don't buy anything that needs to be ironed or dry cleaned. I need to. Yeah, I try not to now, too, but some things just have to be ironed. Um, Links Acres. Mark doesn't have a channel. He has a book and video, Regenerate Agriculture. Hmm. I will definitely look him up. I've got his name written down, and I will look him up. Deborah will be 98 today, so I have a heat in the summer. I live in Oregon for the last 45 years. We going over a hundred again. Life with the table full. I am the gypsy, but Texas is where I live and plan to stay. Good for you. Good for you. Let's see. Got to run, Kate. Oh, Grampy, thank you for coming in. We really appreciate your time and we appreciate what you have to say. And God bless you too. Be safe and we'll see you maybe next week. Bye. Wildcat Hollow Farms. I married my muse and learned the homesteading end of it from my grandfather. Good for you, Wildcat Hollow. That is great. I married one of my muses as well. My main mentor was my dad as I got older. It was amazing how much stuff that man learned. <laughs> Dave says that a lot. He really does. Uh, let's see. Link say, oh, no, I'm not sorry. It's called Restoration Agriculture. Silly me. Okay. Restoration Agriculture. You know, you guys give me so much to think about. I had to start writing it all down, and it's amazing. When this is over, I go and look things up and learn so much. I really do. Let's see. Bee Lady says she loves listening to folks or videos about the Great Depression. It's amazing. You know, Bee Lady, there is a whole group of videos on cooking during the depression and the way they made things stretch and the way they made things from items you wouldn't expect. So those are something I really enjoy watching. And there was a young lady, a young lady, 94 year old lady, her first name was Cora, I believe, that did a YouTube channel for several years on cooking the depression way. Um, I don't remember exactly what her last name or her channel was. She's been gone for a while now. But she had some fascinating things to say on there, some wonderful things to remember, and some pretty good food, too. Wildcat Hollow Farms, my grandparents lived through the Great Depression. I learned from them. My, my mom was a child during the Depression. Um, my grandfather was one of my biggest life employees. Uh, muses and he told me a little bit about it oh yes poor man's meals good barb i knew someone would remember her she was an amazing amazing cook and such a funny little lady i really enjoyed her let's see the lady i watched those also interesting those in reality is our prepper yes in reality that is prepper information i agree but then what is prepper 
What is prepping? Prepping is preparing today for the future. Whether it's good or not, whether it's lean or fat, it's preparing today for what's to come in the future. So, yeah, I agree. That is prepper information. Deborah says, Oregon has mountains, ocean, beaches, and desert. Wet in the winter can be hot and dry in the summer. That's true. You know, uh, Texas has pretty much all of that as well. So I agree. Let's see. Mama's in the Garden says, my youngest daughter is named after my great-grandmother. Um, I lost it. <laughs> Things are flashing by too quick now. Uh, my great grand uh, named after her great grandmother. My nanny was her youngest child. The teacher, uh, yeah. My oldest daughter is named after both of her grandmothers, and my youngest daughter is named after my aunt and my young next to the youngest sister. So we do a lot of family names. I'm named after my mother and my aunt. So I understand how that goes. Be lady, so many folks say everyone preps, but do they know how to cook all of that stuff and stretch it? Uh, I would say probably most people don't know how to cook that style. They don't know how to make things stretch. I think that's one of the reasons why there's so many folks out there like us who try and teach people to do those things. And there is obviously an interest. And I met a gentleman on um, a live stream that I was doing this morning who has a whole series of videos out now about the fact that there, I haven't finished watching them yet, but about the fact that there is a food shortage coming. And I am trying very hard to prepare for my, prepare for my family in the event that there truly is a food shortage coming. So prepping is just exactly that. Let's see. David says, storing up freeze-dried stuff isn't prepping. I don't know. kind of depends on whether you have a freeze-dryer or not. That could be prepping, too, I think. These days, the way homes are built and condos, no space for victory gardens. That's true. That is true. Um, thanks, Acres. I don't know how to cook to stretch food. I sort of do it, but I also detest cooking. Oh, Lynx, I'm sorry you don't like to cook. That is something that I, I get a real joy out of. And to be honest, the cooking to stretch things is using, like uh, when you make a meatloaf, using bread or crackers to stretch it a little bit, putting vegetables in to make it go further, that sort of thing. So it, cooking like in the Depression, a lot of it had to do with how to stretch expensive things like meat so that you could feed more people in, with less meat. So that's important. Oh my goodness, I just looked down. We have been online for over seven minutes, uh, over an hour and seven minutes, almost 10 minutes. I'm taking up somebody else's time. Oh, guys, thank you for staying with me. I appreciate it. This is wonderful. Let's see, Lynx, I don't really like choosing what to cook. If someone would choose everything to cook. Do you know, Lynx, what I try to do or used to try to do? I haven't done it lately. Oh, be lady they're not doing it anymore? Oh, wonderful. Then I'm not going to worry so much about it. I'll chat a little longer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Lynx, in order to decide what to cook, I sat used to sit down with a calendar, and on each day of the week I'd put beef, pork, chicken, fish, beef, pork, chicken, fish. Then I would look in my freezer and see what I had in the beef or the pork or the chicken or the fish, and I'd make up my menu based on that. Then I'd look and see if I needed to buy anything to go in there and go from there. So, love you, Kate. Thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you. Are you leaving, Bandana Grandma? I'm sorry if you are, but I understand. Wow, Haffy, I didn't realize that Denver had that many community gardens. That's wonderful. Let's see, Beat Cancer. Homestead Remembrance says... The website Beast Cancer has been a true inspiration as he shared his cancer journey and how the Lord directed his healing. So many I know are dealing with cancer. Do you know I am a two-time survivor of cancer? I had my first cancer in 1979 and my second cancer in 2009. And the Lord has, I've told everybody from the first, 
the Lord is going, I have decided that cancer for me is a win-win situation. And the reason it is, is because if the Lord took me home through the cancer, I had all kinds of friends and relatives waiting up in heaven for me. And if he allowed me to be still here on earth, I had all kinds of friends and family here. So either way, I won. And I truly believed it at the time, and I still truly believe it. So, <laughs> well, actually, Bandana, I thought I was too, because when I started doing these Sunday afternoon um, live chats, I was a member of a group, and every hour that changed to a different one. But Bile says she doesn't think they're doing that anymore, so I thought I'd just go on a little longer, if y'all don't mind, and if you want to stay and chat some more. Megan's blogs. Hi, I didn't see you slip in either. I'm sorry. Things are kind of crazy here. Yes, Happy, time does fly when you're having fun. I agree. Um, Homestead Remembrance, that is absolutely true. Praise the Lord. He has. He was with me during every step of the way, both times. And to be honest, I was blessed both times. I met people when I was going through chemotherapy and radiation, I met people and was able to talk to people and learn from them and share him with them that I never would have met any other way. It was a true blessing both times. If he decides that it's time for me to have cancer again, it will be a blessing again. So I, I truly, truly believe that he was with me during the whole thing. He held my hand. He kept me, lifted me up and... I'll keep going until he calls me home. And when he calls me home, I'm there again. So let's see. Bob says it takes a minute to get to that idea, Kate. But once you are there, it's all good. I agree. I agree, Barb. It is. Uh, Happy K does what all the time? Decides to go a little longer? If that's what you're saying. Yeah, she does. Be lady no. Um, it was not in the same place. The first time I was in my reproductive organs and the second time I had breast cancer. And um, on the breast cancer side, um, I had it in one side only, but it involved the lymph nodes. So when it came time, I chose to have both breasts removed and have reconstructive surgery done. So I'll never have that cancer again. Let's see, McCoy's, I wish my mom would get the right mindset to fight her cancer. McCoy's, I understand that feeling. Um, about six months before I had my breast cancer, my mom had breast cancer and she, um, she fought it, but she did not have it nearly as bad as I did. And she was able to just have a mastectomy and be fine. And she's been cancer free for over 10 years. Um, that is a personal journey. That's something that only the person going through it can make. And it's real hard to advise someone in that situation because they have to have either the faith or the determination to go on, or it's just exhausting. It's exhausting anyway, but it's worse otherwise. You're welcome, B lady. Um, my fight with cancer, I share with everybody. I've even spoken at a couple of churches about what the Lord took me through in fighting cancer. So I'm very, very pleased that the Lord took me through that and gave me something that I can share. So I'm very open about it. I have nothing to, to hide. And it was a tough row, but he got me through it. So sometimes chemo seems worse than the actual cancer. Some people choose not to fight it. Lots of people die despite the chemo. So it's really a personal decision. That is exactly true. It, it really is true. That it's a very personal decision. Um, it's something it's really hard to do. McCoy Thilkill's mom has lung, liver, spleen, and in her head, yes, she has just got diagnosed and she needs to change her lifestyle, eating habits, etc. But she won't. That all you can do, McCoy's, is love her and support her in whatever her decision is, because trying to incur trying to direct her decision will only cause her more difficulty. It will only cause her more anguish. She has enough to look at with everything she's got right now. And if you 
try and help her make a decision that she's not already made. It's not going to help her. I promise it isn't. Um, let's see. Link Fakers. No, I've not had cancer, but I have some friends and family who have. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many people out there have um, either have had it themselves or know people who have. And it's a terrible, terrible thing to go through. My family thinks my lifestyle and diet habits are crazy. Yeah, I know that feeling. A lot of people thought I was too, so don't worry about it. I see McCoy's, it's so hard to get to that spot without feeling sorry for yourself. Yes, I agree. But again, oh, Vicki, your mom had cancer and beat it with homeopathy. That is so cool. I didn't know anything about homeopathy when I was diagnosed either time. I'm not sure if I would have tried it or not. Probably, because I tend to like that, but I don't know. Homestead remembered you have to run, but you just wanted to say I have such a soothing, comforting, and clear speaking voice. Thank you so much, Homestead Remembering. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you for coming by. I really I hope we'll see you again soon. Megan's blog lost her mother to cancer when she was 59. I lost my first husband to cancer when he was 58. I know how that is. Unfortunately, they discovered he had pancreatic cancer when it was past stage four. He only lived about six months after his diagnosis. Um, I'll be lady. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All of you guys, I feel like you're my friends. I feel like if I could hug you, I would, because <laughs> you're all just so special to me. Um, I truly do feel like your friends. David, how did my link I posted for Kate's show on your end? Uh, did you post one? I didn't see it. I'm sorry, but let's see. Bandana grants, hyper hugs for me. Oh, thank you, sweetie. You are somebody special. I really loved it. Links loves coming to my live streams. I love having you here too. Believe me, I really do. Let's see. B Lady says, remember, it seemed like yesterday. I didn't know she had it before. That was so sad and touched all of us. Many of us still hurt for you. And you should know and believe that. I agree. Christy, you consider me your friend. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. I really, really do consider you guys somebody special in my lives and you're my friends. Vicky, Vicky's mom is 91. My mom just turned 90 last April. I understand how that is. Oh, Megan, my mom was diagnosed with stage four adrenal carcinoma, died three weeks later. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. Three weeks. That is so hard. So hard. I am sorry. I really am. Mm. That is terrible. Barb Snyder, Dave, thank you. Thank God for that. What did he say? I didn't see it. Oh, well. Wow. You're right, lady. That was terribly fast. No time to get prepared. No time to say goodbye. You know, that's that's something else i got to, to say. Because I'm blessed to have my mom in my life, and because she's 90 and I'm 70, and we know that it's coming, Oh, your throat cancer. Yeah, that was fast. Um, Mom and I are taking, I go to see her every Saturday and sometimes in between. And we spend several hours together. And we are taking our time to slowly say goodbye because we know she's not going to be here another 30 years. <laughs> For that matter, probably I won't either. We're taking the time to say goodbye to each other. We're taking the time to share the good things we remember about each other and make even more good memories. And that's so important. If you have an elderly relative, someone that's been important in your life, take the time to do that if you can. It, it will mean so much more to you down the road. I didn't get to do that with my dad. Um, he died almost 20 years ago now. And uh, he, although he had, he was ill for a while, I didn't live in the town with him. And I didn't get a chance to spend time and do that. So I missed saying goodbye to him. But my mom 
told me about being able to say goodbye to him. And it meant so much to her and it means a lot to me. So I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, please take it. You won't be sorry. Let's see, where have we gone? I'm sorry, I got busy doing other things. McCoy's, it was a regular doctor that found it and told her, okay. McCoy's Oak Hill Farm, she's, is she on any treatment? The oncologist says a few months or with immunological therapy, maybe a year. Oh goodness, that's, that's a short time. That's a very short time when you're looking at it. I'm sorry, that's so, so quick. Hello, cutting board. Welcome. I'm glad to see you're here. Thank you for dropping in. We're talking about mentors and muses today. We're sharing who our muses were. Those are the people that inspired us. And our mentors are those who helped us along the road. Deborah E. says, is anyone planting a fall garden? I'm sort of planting. I'm planting fall vegetables in large pots. So, no, I'm not planting a garden, but I am gardening. Megan's blog said, I lost my dad five years ago. He was back in South Africa while I was in Thailand. I couldn't attend the funeral, so you can relate. Yeah, it is kind of hard. It really is, Megan's blog. I'm sorry you didn't get to. Um, I was able, actually, not only was I able to attend my dad's funeral, but I gave the eulogy, which was tough, to say the least. Um, but... It was good. It was a way to share some of the things that he taught me and some of the things that meant a lot to me. And uh, a lot of folks said that, it, that what I said brought back memories to them. So I was pleased to do it, although I cried through the whole thing. So Link said you planted some things. You're still hoping to get rhubarb plants and get them in the ground. That's a good idea. B lady, I know about that. I had to stand in front of my mother at her funeral and give the eulogy. Um, farming in a backyard, can you grow through the winter? Not sure how cold it drops. Farming in the backyard, yes, we can grow through the winter. Um, generally, I tell people all the time, here in South Texas, we have two days of winter and 363 days of summer. So yeah, as long as you can protect them during those two really cold days, you can usually grow through the winter here. Um, B lady, I lost my dad. I've lost two of my sisters and I have done the eulogy for all three of them. So yes, it's very hard when you stand up in front of your loved ones and share how important they are or were to you. Let's see, McCoy's, let's see. McCoy said her mom is 70, almost 71 as of November. Well, wish her happy birthday for me. I will be 70 the end of this month. It's nice to know that that um, your mom is my age and that y'all are, at least I hope you're close. Um, Roberta Driver. Hello, hello. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm glad you came. Even if you, no one has ever inspired you at all? Roberta, I'm sorry. Has there been some painting or music that inspired you? Muses don't have to be people, you know. Let's see. Dave gave his dad's eulogy as well. Those are so hard to do. Basically, cancer is a load, a load of toxins. Yes, I agree. Father died on August 26, 10 years ago. Yeah. One of my most important muses was my grandfather, the only grandfather I got to know. I had four grandfathers, believe it or not. Both sets of my grandparents divorced and remarried, but I only knew one of the four of them, and he was a huge influence on my life. And... Um, Oh, Roberta, I'm so sorry. Do you have anyone who is your muse now or um, anything that is your muse now? I hope you do. Life without some kind of inspiration is very hard. Let's see. Now we're going on to talk about gardening. Um, I had to pull all of my tomato plants out 
yesterday. I planted 10 tomato plants, all in the beefsteak size tomatoes, different varieties, but that size. And I got one tomato out of the 10 plants. And when it ripened and came off the bush, it was the size of a grape. So my tomato plants didn't do anything this year. My herbs, however, are doing beautifully. I've had lots and lots of basil. I've got three beautiful rosemary plants growing now. I've got thyme and oregano and lavender and parsley and everything is doing beautifully. But they're all grown in pots. So I don't, I'm, I'm still having problems figuring out what happened to my tomatoes. I'm not sure what it was. Um, just all of a sudden, they got beautiful. They got big. And then all of a sudden, all the leaves came off at one time. They all turned brown, curled up, and fell off. I could not find any sign of pests. There were not any, um, no webs for like spider mites. There were no creatures crawling on them. I looked on the underside of the leaves. I looked on the top of the leaves. I checked the soil they were growing in. I couldn't figure out what it was. I don't know why it happened. Let's see, Christy said, I think my remaining tomatoes will be pulled out soon. Not a good tomato this year either. Yeah, it's been terrible. Life with the table full. Hey, Kate, been watching with the sound off. Did I miss anything? Oh, you missed everything. You'll have to go back and watch it and replay. <laughs> We're talking about gardening now and how much trouble it was. Uh, Bee Lady Gardens in, I think, oh, no, Bandana Grandma Gardens in Tunnels. Um, I garden in big pots. I was very lucky to get a huge uh, seven great big pots that, that professional nurseries grow large trees in. I got them for free just for asking, and I have been growing things in them, and it's been good. Bee Lady says, in many chats all around the country, they learned this was an especially bad year for tomatoes. I can believe that. It has been terrible, just awful. Probably in the backyard said, my kids and future children are why I want to live a healthy lifestyle and grow good food. Good point. Um, can you grow more tomatoes in pots? You know, I have not tried to grow um, fall tomatoes. I don't know. Um, it's certainly warm enough, but I don't know how well they would turn out. Don't forget to hit the like button. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, folks, it's almost 2.30. I've gone a half an hour over. Um, I'm supposed to be going to my best friend's house today, so I'm going to have to sign off. I've really enjoyed this visit today. You guys have been amazing, as always. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for inspiring me again. You have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. God bless.